Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Now this is a subject that came to my attention thanks to a message to my Facebook page when somebody pointed out a structure known as Azaka Castle in Japan. I'll be totally honest and say that my knowledge on Japanese history isn't great, but I'm always willing to investigate interesting pieces of human history and well, Azaka Castle certainly got my attention. The castle is one of Japan's most famous landmarks. It sits on a 1 km square plot in Ozaka and was built in 1583 by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. It stands on top of an older fortified Buddhist temple that was built in 1496 and according to recent archaeological excavations, the temple was built upon the ruins of an old imperial palace. This imperial palace was apparently built in the late 4th century AD. So we have a site with at least three different phases of building work, and many more if you add in the renovations that have taken place. A site that has always been an important political centre, with each structure built on the site being of high importance and high status. That was a very convoluted backstory, but I think a little background information is necessary before I show you some of the megalithic marvels at the site. Azaka Castle is built on two raised platforms of landfill, supported by sheer walls of cut rock. They employed a technique called burdock piling, a Japanese technique for building stone walls. We find large rocks fitted together, with the cracks filled in with pebbles and smaller stones, giving structures a similar appearance to other polygonal masonry walls that we find across the world. These walls are sloped, making ovate shapes similar to the blossoms of the Japanese burdock plants, hence the name burdock piling. No mortar was used in the building of the castle walls, and this is because it allows the individual stones to move slightly during earthquakes, without causing significant wall damage. Burdock piling came from an earlier technique called disordered piling, which is when a large number of small stones are packed together tightly. This was used in some Japanese castles to create a wall that was difficult to climb. What we see in the Azaka castle boundary walls is certainly burdock piling, with each of the two platforms overlooking a moat. The central castle building or tower is 5 storeys high on the outside and 8 storeys high on the inside. The focus of this video though is not the outer boundary walls but those that make up the walls on the inside and the colossal megalithic stones inside them. The most famous megalith is known as the octopus stone, also known as the drum stone, and is the largest of several megaliths at the castle. It measures 5.5 meters by 11.7 .7 and weighs more than 120 tons. It is called the octopus stone because of a so-called octopus shape on its lower left-hand corner. No, I don't see it. At the castle, in total, there are 5 stones that weigh more than 100 tons and 15 that weigh more than 50 tons. The stonework is truly incredible. From this view, we probably envision a block that is shaped like those at Baalbek, very regular, but interestingly, these enormous blocks are actually quite thin. Apparently, although the octopus stone is 5.5 by 11.7 .7 meters, in thickness it is between just 70 and 90 centimeters. This thinning of the rock probably made it more manageable for building purposes, even though it still weighs more than 120 tons. Looking at the craftsmanship of these walls and it is incredible, and experts are still unsure how these giant stones are assembled together. Yes, the gaps between the stones are larger than the gaps we see in the ancient Peruvian stonework, but the blocks all have an irregular shape and the fitting is pretty spectacular. These enormous blocks are different to the outer walls. The outer walls are all made of smaller stones, they are more homogeneous, so I wonder if these giant blocks are actually the nucleus of an older structure. 
Are these the remnants of the original imperial palace from the 4th century AD? The blocks could be in their original position from an earlier structure, yes they could have been brought to the site to build the latest castle, or they could be repurposed and reused stone from the Buddhist temple or the ancient palace from the 4th century AD. Obviously we can't date stone so there's no real way of knowing. Here we see the Sakura gates, and you can see the huge megaliths that flank the entrance. In a number of places around the site, we can see more recent renovations, but the older stones are clear for us all to see. The style of engineering is very similar to what we see in ancient Peru, and the thing in common with both of these parts of the world is that they are both earthquake hotspots. Polygonal masonry with interlocking stones, some large, some small, all different shapes but tightly fitted together, gives more stability than a regular brick wall with mortar. The technique is surely employed at Osaka Castle because Japan is inside an earthquake zone. It ensures that this incredible and important castle can stand the test of time. The stonework employed in the boundary walls of Azaka Castle may not have the same precision as what we see in ancient Peru, but I am still incredibly impressed by the level of craftsmanship. This site is certainly somewhere to add to the bucket list. Azaka Castle had to be reconstructed in 1620, a project that took 10 years after it was damaged through warfare. In 1665, the castle was struck by lightning, and the tower had to be rebuilt. Several more buildings were later burned down after a turbulent transition to imperial rule. In 1931, the main tower was again rebuilt just before Azaka Castle was bombed during World War II. After the war, the castle was restored once again, and that is what we see to this day. One thing is for sure, although the castle has been at the centre of so much destruction and devastation, I'm sure that these huge megaliths have barely moved an inch, a testament to the techniques employed by the original ancient architects. I just want to say thank you so much for being here to watch the video and for subscribing. If you want to support Ancient Architects, you can find me on Patreon and you can also become a member on YouTube. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All the relevant links are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.